recognized for their economic and spiritual Why are we going through the Mackinac Bridge? Folks, it's time for an out-of-state trip. Nothing than Kentucky and Indiana the entire time. This state is completely new to us. We've really never been to um, Wisconsin. Besides the one time that we did for 30 minutes. Catching an Escanaba Lake Superior train. We're doing the same thing here. But we're chasing it back to Iron Mountain area. We're basically catching a 70 year old locomotive that's still on the well. It's on Escanaba Lake Superior trackage. After we catch them here at the county of Blessing, we decided to head up to downtown Iron Mountain by the fire department to catch them for the last time. At the meanwhile, we did end up getting quite a nice shots here at County O. Well, it was unexpected getting some nice ones. We made it to downtown Iron Mountain within 15 to 20 minutes to spare. Especially they have to go 10 miles per hour through the street wanting here in town.
after we catch him in Iron Mountain, we would say final goodbyes to the town and go to our camp place for the night and get some sleep for tomorrow. And then meanwhile, I decided to take a little bit of video of our campsite with the lake in it. It's quite nice, and it was quite nice night. And by the time we got some sleep, it would be around 6 a.m. Getting back on the road, heading to Wixall, Wisconsin. Going to be checking out the Boxy Railroad in Wixall, Wisconsin. After getting them, switching to around the yard, we ended up going to Junction City, where we would basically see absolutely nothing. Anyway, we still wanted to check this place out. It's a two diamond, so with two subdivisions. One of them were the Superior Subdivision, and I don't know what the other sub subdivision is, but all the signals were red, so we didn't see anything. A single thing. I thought we would, but we did not. After we checked out Junction City, we end up getting back on the road to like Oakdale, Wisconsin, on this CP Casey Tomah subdivision. But while we were on our way over there, we see a Union Pacific train heading westbound on the El Tuna subdivision on the Union Pacific. So it's kind of unexpected to catch a Union Pacific train, especially on the Altoona subdivision. I was it, that line isn't that busy, but we just got lucky. <laughs> After we caught the Union Pacific Westbound Manifest, we ended up making it to Oakdale. Ten minutes to spare before Amtrak 1340 heading westbound for State Paul. With the Pesty Cans Pink Scheme, 160 in the lead. After we would get the 1340 heading westbound on the Tomah subdivision, we ended up getting 1333 heading east for Chicago out of St. Paul, but it would be coming out of Tomah, Wisconsin. Even with the 1340 heading west, they probably met in the siding between Tomah and Oakdale. But either way, we got 1333. After we would get these two Amtraks here in Oakdale, Wisconsin, we're back on the road once again. We've been on the road the whole entire day. 
but checking out different spots along the way. Our final destination would be La Crosse, Wisconsin, where we would be checking out two diamonds of Aurora subdivision on PNSF, and the other one would be CPKC Thomas subdivision, but then we would give the word about a friend that would be watching on ATCS. There would be an eastbound on the CPKC Tomahawk subdivision, but a trackage white Union Pacific coal train. into our hotel and put stuff away in our hotel we made it back to the tracks till sunset arrived yup we're gonna be out here for at least a couple hours seeing what we could see on the Aurora subdivision and the CPKC Tomah subdivision there was a westbound bear table train I think this one came out of Chicago or somewhere out west. And I'm pretty sure this one came out of Chicago. Because there wouldn't be any bear table trains coming out of any other directions or towns. Yeah, it's basically Chicago. We would basically see a lot more trains on the BNSF Aurora subdivision than the CPKC Tama subdivision. After like 5 to 10 minutes later, we get another train. This one is an eastbound manifest that would head towards basically Chicago area. And I have no idea what the symbol's on here because 
I'm not familiar with what BNSF territory of what symbols they use. So basically, they're using like kind of weird symbols, but it's whatever because we're seeing them, and this is my first time in BNSF territory. The second unit was ending up being an H2 Mac trailing second. There's really not that much H2 Max anymore. Most of them are in H3, Heritage 3. But we were just lucky to see an H2 Max trailing.
So basically, a BNSF Jeep number as 3194, which is kind of cool. But anyway, right after we caught that eastbound manifest, we ended up getting another eastbound on the BNSF Aurora sub. It would end up being an intermodal with three CPKC units leading on it. Right after that, we end up getting another eastbound, but this one is basically the local that serves around here in Lacrosse. Goes Empire Service number seven heading westbound on the CPKC Tunnel subdivision with a duo of Amtrak chargers that would be leading the Empire Service. There would have been an eastbound intermodal sitting there, but then this one popped out of nowhere heading eastbound on an Aurora sub be thinking that this one is going to go straight through the diamond but then the one that was sitting by the signal by the diamond we would basically get blocked out
after we catch this eastbound intermodal train for Chicago area, we would basically go back to our hotel and get some more sleep before making our way east on the CPKC Tomoff subdivision tomorrow morning. What a very nice surprise to see an H2 Gio leading on CPKC 540 heading to Bensonville, Illinois. That will be interchange either NS or CSX. I would know the symbol what would go on CSX. It would go on B454 heading to Newell, Pennsylvania around that area. If it goes on NS, then it'll go to Mango Junction. Or that somewhere out in Pennsylvania as well. I have no idea where it goes. But anyway, after we spent here four or five hours here at Grand Junction in La Crosse, Wisconsin, we would be moving to basically Wisconsin Dells, where it would be our camp base for the Night. but we would also be checking out other spots along the way we would have Empire Builder number 8 heading eastbound on the CPKC Tomahawk subdivision within 5 hours in the meanwhile we're just waiting on whatever we can catch there is a BNSF grain train that we can catch that's starting to move right now and it would have two Jivos and have two in the front and one in the rear DPU. In the meanwhile, we would have another Grand Train westbound heading over here to La Crosse on the War subdivision that would have a fake bonnet trailing. But in the meanwhile, this is the first Grand Train. CPKC 148 heading to Bensonville, Illinois with CP solo in the front and then there will be one in the mid DPU of the train. This will turn into I-166 for the Garrett Willard subdivision and then to the Erie West subdivision. Tell 
Buffalo, and then it'll turn into CPKC 132 for Montreal. So they basically switch symbols from 166 to the CPKC 132. After we would get CP 148 here at Grand Crossing, we would end up getting a eastbound BNSF all Artawax on the Aurora subdivision. But just a twist, all of these Artawax on this train are brand new, and I mean absolutely brand new. Once they got the crew change and were able to go back east, they highball it right after the crew got on. It feels like whatever time we would see a BNSF train getting a crew change, they would go from zero to like 35 40 quick. Another grain train heading westbound on the Aurora subdivision. The first one that we saw was slowing down, but then get a crew change, starting right back up. He is hauling it right after getting a crew change. Meeting with this eastbound grainer that's getting a crew change. Basically, I did not get the rear GPU on that westbound grainer with the bait on it, but we did have a few trains going by west on the Aurora sub when we were getting blocked out by this grainer. Usually what they do is they go through the diamond, they go set at the yard office here at 
from boss by the yard and whatever time they get done with their crew change they'll head out east and west this is the same local that we saw same locomotives that we saw the previous night it's heading westbound somewhere out west it's probably going to be serving some industries or going to another BNSF yard west of here and then right after the local passed the eastbound trainer was able to move after they getting done with their crew change here at the yard Getting Empire Builder number eight heading eastbound on the CPKZ Tama subdivision. We make our way east towards Wisconsin Dells, where we're going to be basically setting up camp for the night, but we're also going to be checking out other spots along the way, especially like Camp Douglas, Wisconsin. You got it started? We basically wanted to chill at this crossing just to see what we could get. We get a CPKC 249 or some whatever symbol westbound manifest with a KCS leader and a CP AC 44 going second.
eastbound on the CPKC trackage Tomah sub. It would have ALC leading and then Pessy Can 160 trailing. But anyway, we would get 1340 heading westbound for State Paul, flying westbound on a CPKC Tomah sub. Basically our camp base for the night and we're at the KOA camp place in the Downs. We're basically just west of the town, but we're still technically in Wisconsin Downs. Here is a CPKC ethanol train heading eastbound. It would basically turn into whatever C6 ethanol that they would take it to. I would guess this ethanol is going to Tampa for sure. So I'm gonna guess this is gonna be for B631 once it gets into Chicago. Till 50 minutes ish till this westbound came. We heard it in the Dells and I was able to make it here to the signal before the train made it to here. I would guess this is KC 541. I'm unaware of the destination where it's going. But I can tell you right now that it's going westbound. I would go into the state pole, I would guess. Had a GEO leading and a GP38-2 12 seconds. DPU would be a BNSF GEO. Not surprised. Another GEO. Anyway. This would basically be the last train until Amtrak comes.
Trek number seven, the Empire Builder, heading westbound for Seattle, Washington. It would be a little earlier because we're basically in the Wisconsin Dells. Since the previous night, it was a little bit later because it was getting into La Crosse around 8 p.m. in Eastern, it would be 7 for Central. But basically after we get the Empire Builder, we get a eastbound sand train with UP and BNSF G boats. If this is going to CSX, it would turn into B454, but it's heading to Bensonville, either that or going to Chicago, to interchange with NS. I would have no clue what the symbol it would change into because there's a lot of sand train symbols that they would change into. 68N would be one of them. 60L is one of them as well, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, heading eastbound on the Tomas subdivision. This will be the last train of the day because, well, there wasn't anything wanting. Besides 149, that's still a hundred miles out. And by the time it was around nine o'clock in Central, he was like 50 ish, something like that, like maybe like 10 miles. I just didn't feel like getting him, so we just went to bed and just chilled at camp base for the night. But until next time, we will be out again on the CP Tomas subdivision quite and early. It will be the 23rd of August next morning I would be woken up at 6 a.m. sharp in central time and we would be chilling by the camp place and just relax and then I heard a eastbound coming heard them like miles away so I decided just to catch them this would be CP Casey 528 from Mason City, Iowa to Albany, New York. It would have to go through Bensonville, Chicago, Milwaukee, and then through Elkhart, Detroit, Windsor, Toronto, Montreal, and then Albany. It would have a CP leader and then a NS Jibo as a weird DPU. As soon as we get done shooting 528, there will be a sign as nothing for at least a few hours. So that's why we decided to go into town and see what we can find. We ended up giving word about a CPKC 247 heading to State Paul this morning with a CP we build and then CPKC 8781 hitch pag and then a KCS Jibo and then a, another CP unit trailing four.
after we would get 247 at the Dells, we ended up going to Weezyville, Wisconsin, and we would not see a single thing. But then we decided to go do some shopping in Watertown, Wisconsin for a little bit. And then we ended up giving some news that 1340 Amtrak heading to St. Paul, Minnesota would have the Pesky Can paint scheme once again leading the way. Once we got Amtrak 1340 heading westbound, we decided to do some shopping around Watertown, Wisconsin, and only do it for 30 minutes and then giving heads up about an Empire Builder number 8 heading eastbound, and we would make it and then miss it in Pewaukee. That's the reason why we're here at Delaplane Phil to at least see a couple trains here but we did manage to get this westbound, our first freight since 10 o'clock this morning. KCS leader and then a CPG drone second.
after we, we ended up getting this westbound, we would end up going back to the west line and eat some lunch before getting our next westbound out of Milwaukee. Another manifest with another KCS Jivo leading the way ever since the CPKC merger happened. It's kind of common to see a lot of KCS leaders on the CP whales, especially when the merger has happened. I'm not used to it because I'm like used to of seeing CP leaders, but that's just me. That was after 40 minutes have passed. This one shows up. has to wait for Empire Builder number 7 to go by Pewaukee before he proceeds west and yeah that's the only reason why I did not get the Empire Builder on video maybe on the drone but not with the camcorder the reason why we're in Del Plainville is the searchlight I finally got to shot them because of this trip was happening. Literally after like 20 minutes later, we heard a horn from the south on the CN, but I thought it was like a 75i or something. No, we're totally wrong. It's Wisconsin Southern heading back north. To, I don't know where the destination where he came from or going to, but hey, he's going north. 
with the freshly painted Wisconsin Southern paint scheme, but the trailing unit is unpainted Triclops. After getting Wisconsin Southern, we would make our final goodbyes in Wisconsin and make our way south for our final hotel. And meanwhile, I did end up seeing this Sioux line combined with a KCS Jeevo. I don't know if it's just sitting there or not, but I ended up did getting up a video of it just sitting there. I never really saw a Sioux line Jeep before, but I do know that there's not really much of them around anymore, because most of them are off. repainted. But anyway, we're right next to an airport, so that's why there was a plane like leaving the airport. It kind of sucks going through downtown like Chicago area, there's just a lot of crazy traffic and traffic jams anyway another plane taking off we did ending up catching one UP train that was leaving the yard or on a main heading westbound it's a unit pacific one anyway after we sleep at our final hotel we will be in Griffith, Indiana. This is basically our final morning of the trip. 24th, 2024 of August. We're in Griffith, Indiana. This is basically a new spot. I've never really been to Griffith, Indiana. We will be checking out this place for at least a couple hours before making our way home. Maybe we're going to stop at Chesterton. We're not sure on that. Anyway, let's go catch some trains. Our first train that we would end up catching was either... Q122, but I'm pretty sure this one is Q148 for Montreal. It did have a SC75I lead, so that's pretty interesting. Leading an animal. I haven't seen one in a while.
I think this is L515, but this could also be L537, something like that. But anyway, it would have a quad duo of ICs, SD70s. And it's just been a long time since I've seen an IC leading, in general. It would have an X Bessemer Lake Erie trailing fourth out of five. Crazy lash up. Griffith, Indiana do end up getting a lot of big lash ups for the past two to three years it's been getting crazy lash ups. Especially ICs, Grand Trunks, and sometimes SMR Elite Fury. Sometimes there's usually an SD40 that runs around Griffith, Indiana. Most likely it's ICs and Grand Trunks. We were just so lucky to get a quad duo of IC leading with the SMR Elite Fury Match 1 that we repainted. Getting this train, we did end up having another train coming. It's been two or an hour and a half since this one came by. It would end up being another Autoweg train westbound on the South Bend line. It would have a SD70 M Duo leading and then a CN's versions of. AC 44 C 6 M's, which they are X Venus of dash nines, but they were rebuilt it into AC 44 C 6 M, the CN's version.
this was basically unexpected catch at Griffith. Lauren Wilgriner, in January of this year, I ended up catching the Lauren Grinder, two sets of them, working the whales at milepost 297, and eventually I'll get that video up, but we're focusing on this trip. This would not be the last one, but we would get one more before making our way to Chesterton. But I just thought the Lawn Grinder is very cool to see. Especially I saw it back of January. City Will, trailing two out of three, heading for Kirkyard in Gary, Indiana. I'm never going to Gary, I just moved used to. But anyway, we're in Griffith, Indiana. We would have to say our final goodbyes in Griffith, Indiana before making our way to Chester.
soon as we get to Justerton, Indiana, we get a westbound and a mortal. C67 leading, ACC trail in second, C67 trail third. Anyway, this is not our first time here at Justerton. We've been here so many times, but it's kind of okay shots. I just didn't get any pictures here because it's kind of getting boring. I just do video and there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, after we do our well fitting and adjuster tent, after we leave here, this will basically be the end of the trip. So let's enjoy our final time of the trip here in Chester. Given word on the radio that at 30 q was heading east on the Chicago line from Chicago to Elkhart. That would be right after that immortal passed. It would have been like 10 minutes till this train got here. Anyway, this is basically, well, not the only train with CP power only. We did end up catching a couple trains with only CP power, but it just feels good to be back on NS Wales. Especially, I don't really know the area around Wisconsin on the CP, Tama, and Watertown sub. get this westbound that's going by manifest for Chicago but though we saw this coming up what could that be well this would end up being NSB 10 out of Burnt Harbor Indiana for LaPorte Indiana it's basically steel loads for LaPorte but the leader it's quite different than the others. This is basically a white face leading with a P5. A P5 on a white face is quite rare. There's really not that many white face out there anymore. There's really like maybe in the single digits of them or double digits, but it's hard to say. But anyway, B10 is on its way to Lapore.
What a crew, man. What a crew. A 4700 series was trailing on this thing. I have no idea or where it's going or the symbol on this one, but if you guys would let me know in the comments, that would be a helpful lot. But I do know there was a couple grain trains from this year that would go onto the Amtrak Michigan line. The only thing that would have to lead is GP60 Thoroughbreds. They have PCC for the Amtrak Michigan line. Not everything else does. So they would have to have the GP60 lead. Which kind of sucks, but it's whatever, I guess. This is... we would spend like 30 to 40 minutes talking and then we get our last train here in Chesterton. This would basically be ending the trip here in Chesterton making our way back home. From the previous night though, we would give him word that a couple friends of mine would get the last World Wheeler 255 and 256 for the final time on the night of the 24th. Fortunately, I couldn't go because of the trip that I went on. Although I did have fun after all, it just kind of sucked I didn't get the last two low wheelers. It's whatever though because I probably wouldn't be able to get them anyway. And the last time I did, well, that'll be saved for a previous video of mine. Not sure if I'm gonna get the new ones anyway. But fortunately, this video will end here, Justerton, Indiana. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the Michigan or State, or my guys, they will.